A group of Holocaust survivors has attacked a number of major Jewish organizations over their opposition to propose new legislation which would enable them to take their existing outstanding life insurance claims to U.S. courts. Now, these organizations advise survivors to go through existing claims procedures overseen by the insurance industry and avoid the courts altogether. In the early summer of 1939, over 900 German Jews sailed across the Atlantic to Cuba on the MS St. Louis. 12-year-old Herbert Carliner was on board, pictured here with his father. Cuba denied them entry because of disagreements over the terms of the visa telegrammed appeals for sanctuary in the U.S. to President Roosevelt and then to Mrs. Roosevelt were unsuccessful. We sent telegram South America, Central America, Canada. We never, we, nobody wanted us. Finally, we had to go back to Europe. Herbert and his family found refuge in France, but war soon broke out. Most of them were sent to concentration camps and perished. He and his brother were initially in children's homes, were hidden, and then given false papers and new identities by the French underground, eventually coming to America in 1947. The German insurer Allianz told Herbert that his father cashed in his policy on Kristallnacht before they tried to escape to America, but Herbert says this could not have happened. I was with my father when he went down to the store, till the Gestapo came and picked him up and sent him to Buchenwald. When did he get to go with my mother to City Hall and sign the paper? The U.S. federal government has in recent years advised the courts not to hear such cases, referencing deals reached bilaterally and with the insurance companies during the Clinton presidency. A number of prominent Jewish groups also supported this preference, encouraging claims through the insurance industry supported International Commission on Holocaust-Era Insurance Claims, or ICHEC. Since its inception in 1998, ICHEC paid out $306 million to more than 48,000 Holocaust survivors, but in 2004 it ceased to operate. People like Herbert Carliner and fellow survivor David Mermelstein are unsatisfied with this mechanism. Mermelstein, who survived Auschwitz, believes his family took out a policy in Czechoslovakia with the Italian insurer Generali. Well, now we won a right that every American citizen has our right is go to an American court. Right now, we are second-class citizens. Florida Representative Ileana ross Leighton has authored a bill which would ease access to the U.S. courts and require the disclosure of documents from European insurers. But the American Jewish Committee, the Anti-Defamation League, B'nai B'rith International, the Conference on Jewish Material Claims Against Germany, the World Jewish Congress and the World Jewish Restitution Organization have jointly opposed such legislation in Congress, saying survivors still have an effective way to claim, despite the closure of the iCheck process. The insurance companies, even though iCheck no longer uh, functions, have agreed to use the same standards, the same valuation if individual claims are brought to them. There is a special office uh, in New York State uh, that is uh, able and willing to assist pro bono in processing these Holocaust insurance claims for individuals. There's already uh, mechanisms in place for people uh, to, uh, to find some ultimate uh, solution uh, if they haven't yet uh, had these claims resolved. The groups argue that the bill raises false hope for survivors who will need a much higher standard of proof in court and could face large legal bills. But the Holocaust Survivors Foundation USA is on the offensive. For ADL and AJC and B'nai B'rith to oppose the survivors, to lie about the scope of past agreements by the United States government and to accept money as the ADL has from Generali and as the American Jewish Committee has from Allianz and oppose the survivors is really one of the most disgraceful uh, black marks on the Jewish community that we've seen in many years. The Anti-Defamation League has not responded for comment on the funding issue but the American Jewish Committee has vigorously disputed the assumptions made about an inherent conflict of interest. Allianz came forward a few years ago wanting to fund one exchange program that would bring young German professionals together with young American Jews to Germany in large measure to confront these questions 
uh, still remaining in terms of that Holocaust legacy, particularly for a new, a third generation, if you will. It's a worthwhile program. Uh, because we uh, administer this program and Allianz funds it, we're thereby compromised on this issue, it's an outrageous charge. The Jewish organizations fear that the bill will jeopardize negotiations over future assistance, such as the $200 million a year commitment for 2013 and 2014 to provide Holocaust survivors worldwide with home care, a commitment made by the German government. And they say that U.S. credibility will be damaged in ongoing and future negotiations because of the notion of legal peace that they say was agreed with the insurance companies. But the Holocaust Survivors Foundation USA say no such agreement was ever reached with the U.S. government and certainly never sanctioned by them. Members' frustration is also compounded by the fact that with old age, the opportunity to seek legal redress here in the United States is ebbing away. This is Daniel Wrenches for JN1 in Washington.